Hey everyone, so in this video, which is the unit two of the beginners video series, we're gonna be talking about working with workbooks. So in the last video, we talked about you know, how do you create a new one and how do you kind of navigate the basics within that workbook you've just created. But what we're gonna cover in this video is going into a little bit more detail um, about the workbook we just created, including you know how do you kind of navigate through it? Um, how do you use the keyboard? There's a, so many shortcuts in Excel, which means that you can work faster and, and navigate a lot easier than clicking through. But we'll show you how to do that with your mouse as well. Um, and we'll also discuss working with the go to and working with the files and folders dialog box. So let's get started with um, understanding workbook navigation. So I'll open up a workbook that I already have open but you can just open up an Excel file that you already have on your computer. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about how do you actually navigate the Excel file. So there's kind of two areas that I wanna talk about. So number one are the tabs at the bottom of the screen and number two is the ribbon options at the top of the page. So the ribbon options at the top of the page give you different sections within Excel to edit this screen that you see with before you, which is the tab. Now, when you first open a new Excel file, you're only going to have one tab on screen. So I'll just quickly show you that this is a already completed workbook. So you can see here that you just get a blank sheet, sheet one when you first create one. And if you want to create a new sheet, you can just click here. And that way you can have different sections, whether it's a different topic for each. Maybe you have your finances here and your workings over here or how most people do in, in the real world, in the professional world, how they do it is they'll have like an output tab and this is just the findings, like you might have your summary table here. And then behind that, you'll have your workings and you might actually create like a divider. So you might have your workings tab where you've got all your ugly formulas over here. And then you've got a divider which just says workings. And you can type something like that and right click, change the tab color. And that way you've got a nice way of kind of neatly presenting your workbook. And I think it's really important to have a neat, neat Excel workbook. So you might just have a summary table here, workings here. When you get really advanced at Excel and you start doing kind of fan financial modeling and things like that, you'll end up with workbooks with hundreds of tabs and you might have multiple different sections and subsections. So you might create a tab where it's kind of, um, you know, let's say you're doing a financial model and you might have your output, you might have your scenario analysis as one section, you might have your assumptions as one section, you might have your workings as one section. And then within that, you'll have subsections about, you know, workings on, this side and this side and this side. For example, you might have your, um, you know, your your P and L on one workings on one tab, your balance sheet workings on another tab, etc. Um, and then also, what I like to do is, particularly when you're working with a model, is have a section something like this where it's source, and that's when you put in all your input data. For example, your client might have given you a P and L, they might have given you a balance sheet, and I actually like to paste the, the actual original source data within this, and that way. There's no links to external workbooks, which we'll talk about in a later video, which is a really bad way of doing an Excel file because you have broken links and things like that. So if you're not sure what that means, don't worry too much. We'll cover that in a later video. So really, we're just starting with the basics as to how to navigate this Excel workbook. So let's go back to our other um, Excel file. And you'll notice as soon as I hover over the Excel button down here, you can see that I've got my two workbooks as well. So there's, there's really kind of two levels. You've got your different workbooks. So that's actually different files that you have open. And then within a workbook, you've got your tabs, which is the level down. And this is kind of like the different pages within a book. You could kind of think about it. And then, you know, I guess dividers as well to kind of keep it neat, which is just another tab that you've kind of colored differently. Now, we mentioned at the early, <coughs> the early of the video, what we're gonna cover is, you know, the ribbons at the top of the page, as well as the tabs. So the tabs are the different pages within a book, whereas the ribbon options at the top, these are the different kind of tools and settings and things that you can do within Excel. So for example, if I wanted to, you know, even do a draw function, I can then select that and then edit it within my existing tab, right? See what I've done there. Um, so let's start off with going through the ribbon options. So I guess the first tab, sorry, the first ribbon option I should mention is the home. And this is where most of your kind of key options will be. In most instances, this is the default ribbon that I'd keep open. Um, and this has got things like, you know, pasting data. 
so you, you know and different options if you wanted to select down here so you've got like just normal paste so you've got just pasting the numbers or you can paste the formatting and other things like that um, at the same time you've got your cut and copy options which is the same across other office tools so basically the difference between copy and cut is that when you press copy um, basically if you paste it somewhere else it, it retains the original whereas if you cut it it deletes the original right so if I cut and paste over here it disappears from the original now you might be wondering how did I do that so quickly without having to paste up here it's because I'm using my keyboard at the same time right and we'll talk about some of those shortcuts a little bit later um, but it's much easier than going click copy click select over here paste right so it's much slower but we'll talk about those later um, so what else we've got format painting so for example you know I might paste just the the actual text without the formatting right but what if I want this to look like the rest of my Excel spreadsheet where well, you can just click here format paint and now all of a sudden it looks the same so it's got the same border it's got the same text color size everything right just overwrite that okay so this section here within home is where you can do your text fonts so your bolds, italics, underline, etc. So if I were to click here, bold, you can see what that looks like. You can press I, italicize, or U, underline, adds a line underneath. Um, you can also do your, your borders over here, which is why my table looks like it does over here, is because we've added a border to it. So if you select down here, so let's select certain cells. Um, you know, there's all different options. Like, do you want to do a thick outside border? So you can see that's been selected like that. You can do um, no border, all of a sudden it looks like that. Um, you know, you could just do right border, or you could draw your own. So you could, you know, draw a border like this. So if you want to do like, like this, or like that. So basically it's just like drawing on a page and it'll do it for you. Um, also worth mentioning this top section up here is a couple of options and you can customize this, which we'll talk about in advanced options in the advanced section but you can choose what you want to put up here but by default I believe it's save and redo sorry undo and redo and this just gives you the option to kind of go back a certain number of steps because I've applied all these borders and things like that I'm just gonna undo it and all of a sudden it's back to how it was um, the other way you can do that is with a keyboard shortcut which is control Z so let's say I applied this border like that I, have, I did that by accident you can press this button up here and do one step back or you can press down here and choose any number of steps back within history like 23 actions 20 actions like that we're back to it right at the beginning um, okay so what's next um, so we okay so we've covered through this you can you know make the text smaller or larger choose the you know the font size and the font type that you want you can see it's changing that cell over there there's also keyboard shortcuts for everything that we're doing with the mouse by the way so over time you will learn as you become more advanced in Excel what the key keyboard shortcuts are and that way you don't need to click through um, you can also change the alignment of the text in this next section over here so if we go like that you can make it centered you can make it left right and then also in terms of kind of how high up or how low on the row each of those cells are you can change that as well so you can make it high low middle you can also wrap text so what does that mean it means that when a text is wrapped that when you when it doesn't quite fit in the cell for example see that text now overlaps it just pushes it down to the next level and makes this row a little bit bigger that's all it does um, we can also merge and center so what that does is see each of these individual cells you can basically just click merge and all of a sudden you've got a combined cell um, but we went through this in the last video this is where you change the kind of type or identity of the text that we're dealing with and that's important for dealing with formulas later on so for example if we switch between text and a number Excel won't necessarily recognize when something is a text or a number um, normally it does like if you've typed in a number Excel will realize it's a number but if we were to change this 
to a number or vice versa. If we were to change a number by default, it's going to think it's a, it's a number. If we change that to kind of text, it might screw up some of the formulas because Excel now thinks it's text and not a number, so it might not sum that. Okay, so um, what else? Conditional formatting, so we'll talk about this in later videos, but this is just a way to kind of, when you're dealing with a lot of numbers, you can essentially um, create things like color scales. So depending on how big or low the number is, assign it a red or a green, for example, put icons and things like that. But we'll go through it in detail in later videos. We've also got up here our styles. So, and this is really important later on when we get to financial modeling. Um, and I think one of the key lessons that you can learn right from the beginning is just have really nice, neat, structured Excel files. It becomes really important as you become more advanced as well because when you're doing a model, for example, it's really important to distinguish between what is a input cell, for example. So where do you insert data so that someone else, when they're dealing with the file, they know where to change the numbers and what not to change. We've got outputs, which is kind of like once you put an input number in somewhere, it'll run through all the calculations and then this is the output number that you need to be looking at. Um, if you need to put text like a note, you can use that or identify this as a calculation cell so people don't you know, play around with that and change you know, and screw up the model. But it's not just these ones, right? So for example, we could change this to you know, a text. Everything in this column we could change to, oops, sorry. Everything in this column we could change to text just by selecting one from these options and all of a sudden it's changed the formatting. But you can also change it in other ways. You can change your own custom settings. So for example, I've changed this um, heading to a dark blue simply by selecting up here and changing the color. But we could equally do like an orange or a light blue. You can, these are just the default ones that you know a lot of people use, especially if you're dealing with headings or these modeling ones. But you know, you don't need to use them and you can also create your own in here. But we won't cover that in this video. But you can create a new style by doing this and then it will always appear up here. Okay, so um, I probably won't cover too much of these other things because you won't be using them too often. Um, let's go through the next ribbon. So we'll go through to the insert tab. Now, is there anything in here that you might potentially use? Not really, I don't use this too often. The main one that comes up, and this is probably a bit more advanced, is when we're dealing with charts. So we, we have detailed videos later on in the in intermediate and ex, uh, advanced sections of this uh, course where we go through how to create a chart You'll need a number set, so we'll need a number. We'll need a lot of numbers. I use a keyboard shortcut for that. Don't worry about how to do that quite yet. So you need a lot of numbers, and then once we've got that, we can kind of do a chart, All right? Or if we create a random data set, and this is a formula that I'm typing in. Again, don't worry if you don't know this. We'll cover this in the formulas but what the, this is a formula, so basically it's a way of um, doing a mathematical equation in Excel. It's what we use Excel for most of the time. In this particular formula, again, don't, know, don't worry if you don't know this one, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a random data set of numbers between zero and, let's say, a thousand. And Excel will literally just create a bunch of random numbers for me wherever I paste that formula. So now we can do all kinds of charts. But don't worry too much about this. We'll cover charts later on. See, but you can gives you an idea as, as to what you can do. Okay, so what, what else is in the insert ribbon? So we can create tables. So let's say we've got a data set and we've got um, like random text up here as headings. I'm just copying and pasting these using my keyboard shortcuts. But you could have also done these through the home tab, press copy and paste. So insert table, what is a table? So a table, I've just pressed insert table, it's selected this. Um, it's asked me where the data is. It's just a way of basically um, putting a select range and headers and applying kind of filters. And within that, then you can do things like adding a pivot table, which is very advanced, or you know filtering these columns straight away. It's not the only way to filter columns. And again, we'll cover that in a later video, but this option is here. So let me just delete this and we'll keep going through. Okay, so you can also insert pictures and shapes. So 
you know, typically this stuff is better for PowerPoint when we're creating like images. Um, typically we don't use this too often in Excel, but it can add an extra level of, you know, neatness or easy to understand to your Excel file. So you might add it in a arrow, for example, next to an input cell so that you, you know, people know which cell to edit and we can select this merge center at a border and then format this as a input cell. And now people know to edit this, right? So they type in their number here and then it calculates numbers over here. Okay, um, we can also just add in pictures, icons, don't worry too much about this or any of these other things in here. Um, this, a lot of these are quite advanced things over here. So charts are advanced, we'll cover that later. Spark lines are advanced, we'll cover that later. That's basically just a, a very quick way of doing a chart, um, a very simple chart. Um, slices and timelines, these are advanced and these are for kind of your pivot tables and pivot chart, um, yeah, pivot charts. You can add it in a hyperlink to a website if you'd like. Again, doesn't come up too often. We've got text boxes over here. So, you know, if you wanted to add some text that's not necessarily within a cell, because a cell is restricted there, or maybe you've got a number underneath that you, you know, didn't want to overwrite, you can add in this textbook so it sits on tops. And you can say, add in your input below. Oops. There we go. Okay. So, and then some word art, you know, again, not necessarily um, important, probably better for Word and PowerPoint, but you can do it in Excel too. So you can add in your fancy text if you wanted to. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, is there anything else that we need here? Probably not. I think this is everything within the insert tab. So let's have a look in draw. So this is something that I don't really do in Excel. Um, but you can, let's say you're reviewing someone's work paper and you just wanted to do some markups. What you could do is you could just write on top and say, um, you know, what is this? Or maybe you just wanted to do like a signature or a tick or an X. Maybe you're doing, you're marking someone's work in Excel, right? So it's really up to you how you wanted to use this. I don't use this very often, but it is kind of cool, especially this rainbow pen. I like that one. And if you wanted to erase it, you can just use this eraser tool to override it. And that's pretty much it within this draw section. Within page layout, this is one that you might come up across every now and then. I believe I've got another video on this later on. But this is basically how you organize your page, including whether it's landscape, portrait, how you, it, you know, if you wanted to print it, you can see what that looks like on a page before you print it. You can change your background. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it on this one. Formulas. So we'll go through formulas in, in a lot of detail later on. Um, but you don't actually need this tab to insert formulas. And to be honest, I don't use this tab very often because when you do formulas, and we'll cover this in a later video, all you need to do is basically select a cell and go equals to start the formula. And then you can start typing in, you know, a sum formula, for example, and a bunch of them will pop up like this. But if you prefer, you can go to this formula tab and just select from the drop down. They've got a bunch of formulas here including like what category it falls in, um, you know, if it's text, logical, financial formula, and we'll cover each of these later. Um, but it might be a way of you kind of having a look and seeing what's available. If you just hover over it, it kind of explains what the formula does as well and how do you use it. So for example, where do you put the text? Where do you put the old text, etc. So handful if you're starting out, um, but we've also got this handy guide down here of tabs that we provide with this course that teaches you each of the each of the key formulas, how do you use it, like an example, uh, etc. Okay, um, you can also kind of check for errors with an Excel formula. This is probably one that I do use a fair bit, which is especially if you ever have a circular reference error, which is when, you know, A is referencing to cell B and cell B is referencing to cell, say, cell A and it's going around in circles and doesn't make sense. This helps you find it if there is one. Other than that, don't use anything else too often here. Calculate options. Um, this might be important later on. If your Excel is on is slowing down, you can click manual, and that means it just won't calculate, recalculate the formulas every single second. So this one's only really important if you're dealing with a really big Excel file. If 
for most people, you probably don't need it. Um, I guess the other thing to look out for is if you feel like your formulas aren't updating and you can't figure out why, come back and check here because it could be in manual mode and it should be on automatic. Just click calculate now. Okay, in data, um, you probably don't use this too much, especially for beginners, but we'll cover off some of these in the intermediate and advanced section later on. For example, editing links. So that's when your data, when your Excel file is um, linking to a workbook outside of this one. And we want to avoid that because if you accidentally, um, you know, don't have both Excel files open, you can get what's known as a ref error, which is really complicated. And we just want to avoid linking outside of our Excel file. But this allows us to tell where those links are and allows us to break them, which will just hard code that number that's linked. What else? In tables, you can also add filters. So if we were to select our table and then press um, add filter, you can see it's now added a filter here and you can sort by like alphabetical, um, by color. So you can change the order. So let's change this A to Z. Oh, there's a merge shell in here. Let's unmerge this. And now it should work. Done. So you can change the order of tables. Um, in case you're wondering what I just did then, basically it had an error because one of these cells were merged. What is merge cell? So let's see what happens when we click merged. Basically it makes those two cells a single one and that kind of causes issues for sorts and other things like that. So we try to avoid doing a merge. And what I did just then is I just undid that. So I pressed that button up here, but I used my keyboard, I pressed control Z to undo it. It's a bit faster. Okay, what else? Data we've been through here. Um, these are some advanced things which are cover in later videos. What if analysis? This is an advanced thing which cover in later videos. And these things over here, groupings. I really like groupings. Um, it just allows you to kind of, um, basically, if you wanna have a section within kind of a list, for example, you can press group and you can see now that it's added in these little lines here that you can then press this button to hide. It's the same as hiding rows. So for example, if we just right clicked and press hide, but the difference is you can see this little expand button over here. So people know that there's hidden rows, whereas here it could be very easy to miss this, right? So people might, someone might come along and there might be numbers hidden in there and they do a sum formula or something like that. And it just, it ruins the calculation, makes it difficult for other people to understand. Um, whereas with here, it's very easy to see. You can click that and expands it and opens it. So I'll just click undo for these. And then you can ungroup it as well. Review. So you can do a spelling check. Let's press that. So I typed it here. That's not in the dictionary. So we can correct that um, or add it to the dictionary. Or we can delete it. Let's go ahead and delete that. Thesaurus probably doesn't come up in Excel, probably better for Word and PowerPoint. Um, we can add comments. So we, let's say we select this cell. We can add a comment. It pops up with your name by default. And then it's really important for reviewing other people's works. You can say, this formula looks wrong. And then at the end, when someone's going through the workbook and they want to find the comments, they can actually pr press through these and find the previous or the next comment in the workbook. And they can tick off their review points like that. It's also good for your self review or just providing explanatory kind of comments to people who are looking at your work. You can also protect and unprotect your workbook so you can add passwords so that people can, um, you know, they can only access certain sheets if they've got a password. You can also go through and add passwords to the entire workbook so people can't actually open it unless they've got a password. You know, if you've got confidential data and things like that, I believe we cover that in another video later on. In the view section, we also talk about kind of page break view, normal view. So this is just a way of kind of filtering between how the page looks. This is the page break view, which means what does it look like when it's printed? So we can change basically when the page is split between different pages. So right now, Excel is assuming that this is over two different pages, but by dragging that across, now it's all on one page. Um, you, again, it's this doesn't really matter. It's just up to you and how you like to look at the page. Like maybe you don't like to look at the grid lines. You can remove that. If you don't like the formula or the heading bars, you can untick those as well. This is a really cool thing, freezing panes. Um, 
So basically, if you have a long spreadsheet or something like that, I'm trying to find one, maybe this one's good. And see how you scroll down and you kind of miss this heading up here and, and maybe you've got a lot of data points and you, you forget what's up there. What you can do is actually select this like that, go freeze panes and freeze panes like that. And that way, see how there's this line here now? That means when you scroll down now, this is actually frozen in place. And that means at all times you can see what the header is. So you can also do it from columns as well, freeze columns. But the problem is you can only freeze one at a time. You can't freeze this and that. So if I were to try and freeze this, see it won't let me, I have to unfreeze panes first. So that means this is no longer frozen. And then I go ahead and freeze panes like that. And now you can see the lines up here that's frozen. So when we, when we go across this way, it's still gonna be there on the, those two rows. That's basically how it works. And to undo it, just press unfreeze. You can also press split up here, which is a really cool way um, where you can actually freeze both the side and the top. So basically if I was to press, let's just delete this. If I were to press here and press split, see how the lines are split here and split here. It basically means that this is frozen and this is frozen. And what we can do is now we can scroll down here, the head is frozen and we can scroll to the right and that's frozen, that one row, that, sorry, that one column here is frozen as well. Okay, I'm just gonna click that again to re redo it. Um, and then finally, one really cool thing is new window. So if we click new window, what this does is see how on the name at the top, it now says the name of the sheet plus a number at the end. So that means we've got the same workbook, but in two different screens. And that's really important, that means when you're working on two screens, for example, you can drag this across to the other screen and work on the same workbook in two screens. And that means you can maybe, you know, you can keep two tabs open at the same time, for example. So I can work on shortcuts in one screen and this tab in the other screen. And it means that, you know, when you're checking work, for example, I can cross reference between the two instead of just clicking between tabs and going, oh, okay, that number is there, that number is there. Okay, that's very slow. I recommend doing this new window. See, it's, I've done it again. Really, I use it every single day, super important tip. And if you just wanna get out of it, click X. And it's not gonna close your workbook, but now see the numbers have disappeared. So if I were to close this one now, it's gonna close it for real and Excel's now saying, oh, okay, you know, you don't wanna close this because you'll lose your work. So how do you wanna save your changes before you close it? But I'm just gonna click cancel because I don't actually wanna change it. So I think this is also important to understand how this new window works when you've got another Excel, like a different Excel file open. So if we go back to our kind of our um, Windows Explorer view, which is this one here, you can see now I've got the new book, the different work file, different Excel work file open, as well as our cheat sheet open. So we've got two workbooks open, but we've got three views. So we've got one workbook here, got second workbook here in open with one tab and that same second workbook over here open in a second tab so that's kind of how it interacts you can close this one it's not going to close out your this expo excel workbook because it's still got one tab open but if i were to close this one it would close that workbook so yeah really important tip um use this one all the time and if you've got two ones open let's say it's kind of just opened in a random view like this, what you can do is you can go view, um, view side by side, um, compare side by side with book one. And now you can see we've got them open in both screens. But let's say you don't like this view, what you can do is um, open it in the left view. So what I did there is I used my keyboard, I, I pressed down the Windows button and I pressed left. So holding them both down at the same time, so press the window button, hold it down first, and then press the left button. What this does is it moves a minimized window. So this is a maximized window, this is a minimized one to the side. And I can do the same with this one over here. I'm gonna select this and then Windows button, hold it down, press to the right. And now all of a sudden, big screen. So I press that one and I press up this time. And this one I'm gonna press Windows and down. And now I've got them side by side this way as well. So really, really cool way of doing it. Really important tip. 
Okay, cool. Um, what else? Macros. These are super advanced. You don't need to worry about these. Help. You don't need this because you've got our course to help you. There's nothing super helpful in here anyway. Um, and then finally, Acrobat, if you wanted to create a PDF. You might not have this PDF. Uh, sorry, this ribbon. This is um, depending on what things you've got installed. You might not have Adobe installed. But if you want to create a, a PDF out of your Excel file, you know, you've got that option uh, there as well. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is probably um, quickly go through some of the formulas to wrap up the video. Um, let's just have a look at some of these shortcuts. We won't go through all of them because there's too many. But I guess the key one to use is just when you're moving around cells, just press up and down like this. But if you want to move to the bottom of this table, what you can do is you can hold down control and press down and it's going to jump to the bottom. Hold down control, press up, it'll jump to the top. Really important one. Um, what else? Some other key ones, if you want to create a new workbook, create press control in. It's going to open a new one like that. If you want to open an existing workbook, press Control O. It's going to open what you've got open there. It's the same as basically going File Open. Um, if you want to save, this is a good one. Instead of clicking this button up the top here to save the workbook, what you can do is just press Control S, and that'll do the same thing. Or if you want to close it, press Control W. Now, if you want to move to the next sheet, so navigating Excel rather than clicking through these like that. A faster way of doing it is actually to press control page up or page down. So I can very quickly filter through these, see how it's moving and I'm not clicking anything. It's because I'm pressing page up now to move back and page down to move forward whilst holding control. Um, now each of these different kind of ribbons that we talked about, like data for example, if you want to go to that, you hold down alt first of all and then depending on where it is you can hold down an extra letter. So let's try holding down Alt. And you can see what happens up here when I hold down Alt is Excel actually gives us a letter that corresponds with the relevant ribbon tab. So we're in data that's Alt A. But if we wanted to go to page layout, we could go Alt P. And now that goes to that section. You can also go to certain areas within that. So if we wanted to go to margins, for example, we could go M and then select it. And it just means when you get really advanced later on is that you can then go to you know various sections of the Excel really quickly um, you know let's say we want to go to password protect we'll just press PSS PS and it means you can navigate Excel without having having to click which can slow you down but you know as a beginner you don't need to worry about all of these now it's more just to let you know that these are available probably the key one that you will need is just navigating and what I mean by navigating is moving around the Excel quickly with your keyboard so practice doing this on your own so just pressing up up left down right so becoming flexible with that and then get a table or something like that and practice going to the bottom and to the top and then to the left and to the right just by holding down control and using your arrow keys also an important one is when you hold down control and shift it selects it so adding shift into the mix actually starts to select cells and when you select cells you can do things like delete them which you can't otherwise do and press Control Z to redo. That's another important one to remember. Um, what else? So we did Control Shift down, but what about just Shift down? So Shift down, you can just select a range just by you know moving your keyboard like that. Pretty handy. So if you only wanted to delete a section, you can do that. So just practice all of those ones around the navigation. You can move to the end, to the bottom, etc. And also another key one is if you press. Control shift home I believe it is so or control home so shift added the selection in it if you go control home it actually takes you that very first a1 cell so yeah there's a lot you can look through here um, but yeah probably the navigation ones are the key ones that I want you to practice but otherwise let's wrap up the video because that's everything about navigating Excel um, hopefully you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching